Hey guys, today I have an epic haul video to share with you. So many new and exciting products to talk about. And as many of you know, I did have skin cancer surgery two weeks ago, and then I was on vacation last week. So I really have gotten so behind on my reviews. And even though I was away for two weeks, products are still coming in to my house and I, things were just piling up. So I feel like I just kind of have to do a big haul and get myself back on track and share all of the new stuff with you. And then I feel like I can kind of move forward. So if you're new to my channel, these are not your typical haul videos. I'm not just going to sit here and hold up products. I actually turn the camera around and I'll show you the products up close. We'll do tons of swatches. And then at the end of the video, I'll also include some reviews of the things that I got a chance to try out throughout the week. So it's kind of part haul and part mini reviews or speed reviews. So if that sounds good to you, let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. Good morning guys, it's Monday and I got two packages in the mail. I got one from Sigma and they have some new bite-sized eyeshadow quads. I also got a box from Dermatology, so we'll open all of these up and see what's inside. So let's head upstairs. All right, let's start out with the Sigma quads first because I just can't wait. I wanna see what these look like. So um, they look like they're $19 each. They're available at Sigma's website. I think these are coming out August 15th. So by the time you see this video, they'll already be on the website. Packaging looks so cute. Look at how adorable this is. Um, and then inside are the six quads. So right away, just at a glance, these look kind of like mini versions of their nine pan palettes. And I love Sigma. I love their eyeshadow formula. But I have to say, over the last several months, their releases have kind of, to me, seemed a little bit repetitive, like they keep using the same colors over and over again. Obviously, we'll have to swatch these and see, but they just look like mini versions of their larger palettes, and that could definitely appeal to you if you prefer quads and you don't like larger palettes, but for those of us who already have the larger palettes, there might be some repeats in here. So I'm just going to pop all of these out, and we'll take a closer look at each one. So the first one is Blueberry Parfait. You have some neutrals along the top here, and then kind of a deeper it's not even really blue it's kind of like a gray with a little bit of a blue undertone and then you have a deeper charcoal gray matte right here so let me go ahead and just swatch this for you and even swatched I'm not really getting like a blueberry parfait vibe from this but at the same time I do like the colors I like um, this for more of a smoky eye because you can use this one in your crease and then you know deepen it up with this you could add this shade to the outer corner so I think it's definitely a great palette if you want more of a cool gray smoky eye. Next up we have creme brulee and this one is just a very warm neutral palette. You have the two neutral mattes over here then you have a gold for the lid and this one is more of a satiny finish and it's just a really really pale gold. So all right, let's swatch this one. Okay, so I really like this one too. I like it because you can create a base eye here with this one in the crease, this one kind of to deepen the outer corner, and then you have a choice of what to put on your lid. If you just want a really basic, subtle, everyday look, you could go with this gold. If you want to amp it up a little bit, then you could go with this one. So I feel like this is a pretty versatile palette if you just want a warm, neutral eye look because you have your choice of doing something a little bit more subtle on the lid or something a little more bold so I like that they gave you both options and then the next one is tiramisu and this one is really like the cool tone version of creme brulee which we just saw so you have your more taupey matte browns over here and then you also have the two golds but they're not as warm so personally for me I like this one a little bit better but um, let's go ahead and see it swatched out. Okay, yeah, I really do like this one a lot. You have the perfect cool crease color right here. Again, something to deepen the outer corner, or if you have a deeper skin tone, um, that could be your crease color. And then you have these two for your lid, and you have the more subtle one again, and one that's a little bit more bold. I just love this color combo. I'm actually going on vacation next week, so I may take this one along with me because I think this is just like a perfect neutral travel palette. Next up we have Caramel Apple, and this one is kind of more of a green palette. You have your neutrals up top and then the greens down below, and I like that they included the neutrals just to kind of anchor the look a little bit if you don't want to go completely green, but you do have that option as well. So, all right, let's go ahead and swatch it. And I actually really like this one too. So 
again, you've got a really nice crease color right here. I love that the greens aren't too, too bright. So if you're somebody who mostly likes neutrals, but you want to play with a little bit of color, I think this is pretty easy and they're kind of more muted greens. And then you also have this beautiful champagne shade as well. So I think this one's another really good one. Peach pie looks really pretty. This is, I think is going to be another one of my favorites next to the taupe one, the tiramisu, because I definitely wear colors like this a lot. So, all right, let's see some swatches. Yeah, so now that I see it swatched, definitely in my top two with tiramisu. I could see myself wearing this one all the time. So again, you have a really kind of pale peachy crease color or transition shade. Even this one really could work for me as a crease color. And then I love that in all of these palettes, they're giving you one shade that's a little bit more sparkly and then one that's either a metallic or a satin finish. So this is really beautiful. Then last but not least, we have Bon Bon. So this one is rosy shades and same format again with the two mattes over here and then the two shimmers on this side. So let's take a look close up. And this one is also super beautiful. I love that um, the rosy shades aren't too bright they're really muted kind of mauvey tones when I wear pinks on my eyes it tends to be something more like this than something brighter pink because I feel like the brighter pinks kind of make me look like I'm sick but these that have kind of almost a little bit of a lavender undertone look really flattering. So I think this one is really pretty as well. So just quickly before we move on, I wanna look at these next to their nine pin palettes because I do think there's definitely some overlap going on. For example, we have the Hazy palette right here and next to Bon Bon, I think you are definitely getting a lot of the same colors going on. Maybe not exact, exact dupes, but close enough. It really just looks kind of like a mini version of it. Also Electric Pink, I think this one is maybe just slightly brighter than Bon Bon, but it also seems to have kind of similar tones. Then we have Peach Pie next to the Spicy palette. I think the reason I like Peach Pie so much is because Spicy is one of my favorites out of these nine pans. It just has those warm, but not like too warm. They're more of like peachy tones. And I just think those are really flattering on lighter skin tones. So Peach Pie is kind of like a smaller version of Spicy. And then right away, Caramel Apple reminded me of the Ivy palette. And I think there's a lot of similarity here. I will say though that I like this kind of more forest green in the Caramel Apple palette, whereas in the Ivy palette, Thistle is more of like a blue green. But I do think that the other three shades in the Caramel Apple palette are pretty similar to Ivy. Creme Brulee definitely looks like a mini version of Ritzy with the warm neutral shades. Again, I don't really see exact dupe shades, but a lot of them are pretty close. So if you have Ritzy already, um, you know, you might not need this one unless you want it for travel. The last two palettes that I have are Rosy and Jules, and these really don't seem to match the last two very much. Jules is a lot more colorful, and Rosy, while I thought it might be kind of similar to Bon Bon, I think Bon Bon is just closer to Hazy, which I showed before, because um, it's a little bit more muted than the Rosy palette. So just something to keep in mind there. And really, I would say that Tiramisu is the one palette that I don't have have a match for when it comes to these larger ones and coincidentally it's one of my favorites in this collection so I think like if you were to get any of them and you already have a lot of other Sigma palettes you could be pretty safe that you won't have these colors somewhere else but as far as all the other ones go like I said I didn't really see any exact exact dupe shades but I think some of them might be close enough for you guys um, that if you have the larger ones you might not feel like you need to buy these unless you just really like quads or you need a smaller palette for travel. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on these. Next up, I also got a box from Dermatology and they sent me their Universal Tinted Moisturizer, which I've seen all over Instagram. I've always wanted to try this, so very excited. And then uh, they also sent me their Brightening Eye Masks. I definitely need to try these. So um, let's go ahead and just look at the Universal Tinted Moisturizer because I wanna see how much coverage it has and what it feels like just quickly um, this has a blend of mineral and chemical sunscreen it has zinc oxide at 12% and it has octanoxate at 7.5 all right, so let's take a quick look love the packaging it comes in a pretty large bottle 1.7 ounces and I'm just gonna put a little bit on the back of my hand. So that's the color. I believe they just have this one universal shade and the tint is really just supposed to keep it from giving a white cast because it does have the zinc in there. 
but I'm just curious to see if it adds a little bit of coverage. It does feel really nice. It has a super, super slight sunscreen smell, but nothing that's too heavy or over the top. It actually smells nice. And it's giving my skin a really pretty glow. It doesn't feel sticky. It's not thick. It's just blending out pretty effortlessly. So let's just look at the difference. I mean, I think it slightly evened out my skin tone just a little bit and it just adds a really nice moisturized glow. So I'm excited to try it. I don't know if it has as much coverage as like a foundation. It does say that it's a tinted moisturizer, but either way, I think the texture is really nice and light and I could easily layer a foundation on top of it. So um, anyway, guys, I'm definitely gonna be testing this out and also the eye masks as well. These have some really good ingredients. They have caffeine actually as the number one ingredient to um, constrict the blood vessels and reduce puffiness. You have niacinamide, hyaluronic acid, aloe, blueberry and watermelon, licorice extract, cucumber extract. You have some peptides in here as well. You have seaweed, red algae. I mean, a really, really good ingredient list. So definitely going to be testing these out and I'll let you guys know. Good morning, guys. I just have some new products that I wanted to share with you. First up, we have a brand new palette from Alter Ego. This is supposed to be a dupe for Retro Glam. So I'm really excited. We're definitely going to be comparing those. And also I have some new perfumes from Dyad. So if you're not familiar with this brand, they're actually a brand started by two YouTubers. They're twins. I'll go ahead and link their channel down below, but they have a candle company and they recently expanded into fragrances as well. So they sent over some perfumes and I am just really, really excited. I smelled one of them and it is heavenly. So we're going to talk about those as well. So let's go up upstairs and check everything out. All right, so let's start out first with the new Alter Ego palette. So here's what it looks like. I have my Natasha Denona Retro Glam over here, so we're gonna compare the two. But first, packaging-wise, it looks so beautiful. Look at the cherry blossoms. I love the packaging. They always do such a good job. They have the shades on the back, and then inside are all the colors. Ooh, I love how this is laid out, actually. So. What they did is they kind of organized the palette into the neutrals, you have the rosy shades, and then all the greens over here. That just makes it so much easier. The Natasha Denona is just kind of all over the place and the shades are just scattered around the palette. So I actually prefer the way that Alter Ego did it and seeing them laid out that way, it just helps you to see really what shades are in here. And it can really help you a lot more when creating looks. And you could easily do an all neutral look with this palette, or you could pull some rosy shades in, you could do all green or mix them, whatever you want to do. But I just think it makes the whole process of just quickly at a glance looking at the palette and selecting shades so much easier. So obviously you can do that with the Natasha Denona as well. I don't believe that the Alter Ego palettes are magnetic. I think they're glued in, they usually are. Um, and the Natasha Denona, you you can pop these out and just rearrange them this way. So if you already have this palette, then you definitely could arrange them the way that Alter Ego has, but I think that is so cool. So anyway, we are definitely gonna go ahead and do some comparison swatches. I'm really curious to see how they line up, but I think Alter Ego always does such an amazing job at just capturing the shades and even their formula. I mean, it's always really good. So, all right, why don't we go ahead and get started? All right, so first let's look at just the Alter Ego palette swatched out and the swatch beautifully like I knew it would. Their formula is always so good. And in the past, whenever I've done comparisons between Alter Ego and Natasha Denona, I always find that the shadows last just as long on my eyes and they look just as pigmented, even applying them with a brush. So I do want to do just a couple of like live swatch comparisons between the two, just so we can get an idea of how the formulas compare. So let's start with a couple shimmer shades. So I want to pick up this really pretty rosy shimmer from the Natasha Natasha Denona palette and I'll also pick up the one from the Alter Ego palette and we'll just swatch them side by side. So here we have Natasha Denona, really smooth, and then we have Alter Ego. So these two are just ever so slightly different um, color wise and also the Alter Ego one I can kind of see little micro glitters in it. 
and the Natasha Denona formula doesn't seem to have those. So I think this one will probably show up a little bit more vibrantly and just look a little bit more metallic on the eye just because it has those tiny little glitters. But if you prefer a smoother shadow, then I think you might prefer the um, Natasha Denona. Although I wouldn't say that this isn't smooth either. It's not chunky or anything like that. But I think if you have textured eyelids, the glitter might highlight that a little bit more. So just something to keep in mind. Well, let's try one of the greens. So we have Oz in the Natasha Denona palette. And then we have, um, I think Twinkle would probably be the same shade in the Alter Ego. It looks similar. So here we have Natasha Denona. And then we have Alter Ego. Those look almost identical to me. I think the Alter Ego one is maybe just slightly deeper, but they're so close and the finish and the texture is pretty much identical there. Next up, let's try this light minty green shade in the Natasha Denona palette and then um, Radiant over here in Alter Ego. All right, so there they are. We have Natasha Denona here alter ego here. All right, so I did notice a little bit of crumbliness in the alter ego palette that I didn't see with the Natasha Denona, just a little bit of fallout. But otherwise, um, the shades pretty much look exactly the same on the skin, same color and same finish. Let's try one more shimmer shade. So I'm going to do flutter over here in Natasha Denona. This one has a lot of crumbly fallout on this side. And then we have prime in the alter ego palette. All right, so here we have Natasha Denona. Again, that one did have a little bit of fallout. And then we have Alter Ego, and this one didn't. So I think, you know, it's interesting because Alter Ego had the crumbles on this shade, but on this side, it was actually more smooth than the Natasha Denona. So each shade is going to give you a little something different. But I think these two are extremely close as well, both in the color and also in the finish. So, all right, let's move on quickly to do a couple matte shades. Okay, so let's start with the shade Fringe in Natasha Denona, which is that minty green matte and then we'll pick up pale in alter ego so we have Natasha Denona here so that one kind of applied a little bit streaky and we have alter ego which wow seems a lot more pigmented actually but it did have a little bit of crumbly fallout <laughs> let me just pick up a little bit more of the Natasha Denona and see what's going on with that one I don't know why it swatched that way all right, I just kind of had to smooth it out a little bit. But anyway, I like the way this applied a little bit better. Let's try another shade. Let's do this light pink called Holly in Natasha Denona and Spring in the Alter Ego palette. So here we have Holly again. I don't know why this is not swatching very well. It's just going on streaky. I don't know what, what's going on. And then we have Alter Ego over here. It just goes on a lot smoother. But at the same time, the Alter Ego one does feel a little more powdery, whereas this one feels a little bit more grippy. So I think the Alter Ego is probably gonna be a little bit easier to blend, but also you might have some that dusts away. And I think um, one of the things about Natasha Denona is that the formula is just really um, rich and intense. So it really grips to your skin. It has like a velvety feel, almost like a thicker feel. And this one feels a little bit lighter weight. So if you're not as good at blending, kind of like how I am, um, you might prefer the Alter Ego just because I find that they blend across the skin much easier. So um, now I'm gonna go ahead and just take this mid-tone pink shade from Natasha Denona and same one in the alter ego again this one kind of has like a little bit of crumbliness going on the alter ego one went on a lot smoother but again you have that powdery fallout although I also had that with Natasha Denona as well there's also a cream shade in both of these palettes so in Natasha Denona it's evergreen and in alter ego it's called grove all right so let's try these out so this is the Natasha Denona one and then we have Alter Ego, which isn't quite as pigmented. It's a little bit lighter. Let me see if I can just pick up a little bit more, kind of build it up and see what happens. Yeah, so it just kind of took another layer to build it up to somewhat close to the Natasha Denona, but I think Natasha Denona definitely wins here. Plus, 
this palette I've had for a while and that shade is probably like a little bit dried out but I still felt like it performed better than the Alter Ego one but overall I really like the smoothness of the Alter Ego mattes and I love how blendable they are so anyway guys I hope that comparison was a little bit helpful I know swatches aren't the same as putting it on your eyes but if you're curious on how the Alter Ego formula compares to Natasha Denona I do have tons of other videos where I did put them on the eyes side by side and did a wear test and all of that so if you're interested definitely check those out Okay, next let's quickly talk about the Dyad perfumes. And I know it's really hard to talk about perfume on camera because you guys can't smell it. I'm gonna do my best to try to describe the scents for you. But I also wanna mention that if you like the sound of either one of these perfumes, they do have sample packs on their website for like $2. So you can go and just grab a sample and see if you like it before just blind buying a perfume on the internet. So I just wanted to make you guys aware that they do have that available. Um, but first let's talk about the scent that I am just head over heels crazy for and that is called highs and lows so they have the perfume spray and then they also have perfume oil that has a roller ball so it comes in both and highs and lows it's one of the most balanced fragrances I have ever smelled you know how normally you spray a perfume and you smell the top notes mostly and it takes a while to get to those really warm and cozy notes at the bottom this one you kind of smell it all at once I get the cozy notes and I also get the top notes at the same time and it's just so perfect it's not overly like floral or too clean smelling but it's also not too warm or too sweet it's just somewhere right in the middle and I'm the kind of person that gets headaches triggered by fragrances so I have to be really careful about what I wear anything that's way too sweet or too heavy or if it's too floral, it'll trigger a headache in me, sometimes make me feel sick to my stomach. So I was so happy to see that neither one of these did that for me. So highs and lows on the top has freesia, jasmine, orange blossom, and also ambrette, musk, and vanilla. So I'm somebody who loves amber. I love vanilla. Those type of fragrances are just so amazing. And the musk that's in here is not that kind of powdery musk. Sometimes they can smell like baby powder, and I really can't stand those but this one it just is like the most beautiful skin scent and it's the kind of scent that smells like your boyfriend or your husband's sweater that they were wearing and they had worn cologne earlier in the day and then you just like put their sweater on and it smells kind of like them and kind of like a little bit of their cologne I don't know if I'm describing it right but that is the kind of scent that I always love so I'm obsessed with this one. Like I said, I liked it from the first minute that I sprayed it and that rarely happens. Usually I have to kind of like wear a perfume over the course of a couple of days to decide whether I really love it. This one, I, I just, it's amazing. And then the other one they sent me is called You and I. This one has musk on the top note, enhanced with lily, rose, lang lang, vanilla, amber. So this one also has the vanilla and amber in it, but I don't smell those quite as much in this one as I do in highs and lows. To me, I smell a lot of the rose and the more florally notes in this one. So I think I do prefer highs and lows, but I still think this one smells really good too. And it's not the kind of floral that's like too intense. It's a little bit more on the subtle side. So if you like scents that smell like rose, I think you would really enjoy this one too. And I find that the longevity on it is really good. The first day that I got these, I sprayed highs and lows on my wrists and I could smell it pretty much all day. Even at night, it was still there a tiny little bit. And I have to say my husband loved this one and he's really, really picky. Most of the time he thinks that the perfumes I wear are like a little bit too sweet. But when I put this one on, he was like, that smells amazing. So if you're looking for a new scent, I highly recommend this one or just this company in general. I actually really want to try their other scents and see what those are like. But they did say that the highs and lows is their best selling fragrance. The oil actually um, wears a little bit closer to the body. So when I put this on, I'm pretty much the only one that can smell it. Like if I move my arm somewhere near my face, I can smell it. But I don't feel like it projects as much as the spray. So if you want something that's even more light and just really, really subtle, then um, I think the perfume oils would be a great match for you. And this just has a little roller ball. So just put it on like this. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to share this brand with you. I always love supporting smaller brands, especially another fellow creator. So definitely show them some love. Hey guys, it's Wednesday and I just got my Ulta order in the mail. I got the new Flower Beauty palettes. I also got the Maple Syrup Pancakes palette from Too Faced and the new Tarte Maneater. I also got the new REM foundation as well as the 
Milani Nude Fruit Fetish Lip Oils. So I have a lot to go over today, but I think what I'm gonna do is probably a separate video on the foundation and the lip oils and then these two palettes right here. I kind of want to focus on those. I just feel like if I do a full video on all of it, it's going to be too much. So for today's video, for the haul, I'm going to swatch the Tarte and Too Faced palettes and maybe we'll do some comparisons, but I'm going to leave the rest for that other video, which should already be up. So if you've probably seen that already, if you haven't, then uh, my full review on these two palettes, the foundation and the glosses will be up on my channel already. All right, so let's open up these palettes and get started. I don't know what it is about fall palettes, but they always just get me so excited. I feel like they put me in the mood for fall. So I wanna start with the Too Faced one first. I think this is the one that I'm the most curious about. I have a feeling that the Tarte one is just gonna be the same formula as their Man Eater palette from last fall, which I really liked. I thought it was awesome. But I think Too Faced is just very hit or miss when it comes to their palettes. I never usually like the ones that are in the cardboard packaging. The tin packaging is usually better. I thought their Italian Spritz palette from the spring was actually really good, but the last year's fall palette really wasn't anything special. So um, let's take a look at this one. I do really like the colors in here. I think it's super pretty. In a way, it reminds me a little of the Pumpkin Spice palette from a couple of years ago, and also the original Gingerbread Spice, which was awesome. So let me just take those out really quick and we'll just do a really quick visual comparison. All right, so here we have the pumpkin spice palette and yes, look at how similar these are right away. I mean, there's a lot of overlap here. I don't think they're exactly the same, but I might actually want to swatch these side by side just to be sure because I think these look really, really close. So we'll definitely check that one out a little bit closer. We also have gingerbread spice. So this one is like the OG and I love it so much. It's really such an incredible formula and I feel like they haven't really been that great in recent years. So yeah, this one is mostly warm tones. I don't see a ton of overlap with this one. The newer one's just a lot more colorful, very similar to pumpkin spice. So, all right, why don't I go ahead and just swatch this by itself first and then we'll swatch it next to pumpkin spice. All right, so as always, I'm gonna be real with you guys. <laughs> this didn't swatch the best. I mean, once you see them all swatched out, it looks okay but there were definitely some shades that just felt so scratchy and dry. Um, like this pink one here, it just didn't swatch very well. These down here, they just didn't feel like that old, really creamy formula that Too Faced used to have. The matte shades felt okay, but some of those also were kind of dry and scratchy. It might apply better to the eye than it swatches, so I think I'm definitely gonna have to test it out before I can give my full opinion, but I just don't feel like these shimmers make any kind of an impact. They just seem kind of dull, and I wanna quickly show this to you next to the pumpkin spice palette so you can see the difference in formula. All right, so I just went ahead and swatched as many of the similar shades between the two palettes as I could. So we have pumpkin spice down here on the bottom and the new maple syrup pancakes on the top. So maple syrup pancakes has way more shimmer shades than this one does. So I was only able to compare six of the shimmer shades since that's all pumpkin spice has. And then I just went ahead and swatched the rest of the mattes that I was able to match up. So you can see pumpkin spice is just way more vibrant. The matte shades have more of like that rich velvety feel while these were a little bit more scratchy and the shimmer shades as well. They just pop a little bit more and they felt a lot creamier. They were easier to pick up. In fact, in the Maple Syrup Pancakes palette, I was getting hard pan in this maple syrup shade right here. It's so difficult to pick up. And when you go to swatch it, it's just like it hardly shows up. You have to just keep going back in and adding more and adding more. So I'm just really, really disappointed in this formula. I don't think that a palette that costs $50 should have this many issues. It's honestly swatching worse than a lot of my drugstore palettes like ColourPop and Alter Ego. So I'm going to have to play with it on my eyes, like I said. But as of right now, I'm just feeling like it's not worth the hype. If you're looking for a fall palette that's kind of similar, try It's a Mood from ColourPop because I think this one has a lot of the same shades in here. So just looking at them side by side, you have some greens, you have the purples, you have the warm tones. Really the only shade that I think the Too Faced has that the ColourPop doesn't is that bright pink. But other than that, I feel like it has really similar colors and it's a beautiful fall palette. I think it's even like on sale on their website. It's around $24 at the moment. And then also, so What's Up Beauty Geodes palette is another really gorgeous one. This one doesn't have as many shades, 
but I feel like the color story is so similar and this is a beautiful palette with a great formula. They're an indie brand. They do have an Amazon store though, so it's really easy to get your hands on it. And those of you who have tried this have told me how much you really love it too. So I think this is just a way better alternative or the ColourPop It's a Mood palette. Or if you can still get the Pumpkin Spice palette from Too Faced, I'm not sure if it's still out there, but if it is, that formula also just feels so much better than this one. I just hate to see you guys waste your money on something that's not amazing for like 50 bucks. It's kind of a lot. Not to mention, this annoys me. Like it doesn't close because this catches on the lid. So you have to kind of like squeeze it and then close it, which again, it shouldn't be that way for an expensive palette. So again, I will be trying this out on my eyes, but I don't really have high hopes for it. All right, next let's try the Tarte Man Eater Nightfall palette. I have a feeling I'm gonna have way better luck with this one because I loved the last one. I thought the formula was great. And I think these colors are even more up my alley than that one. I don't know why this isn't coming out. There we go. All right, so basically the packaging is exactly the same. I have the old one here for reference. Um, the new one comes in purple though, which I really like and then inside we have all the shades so in here you do have a mix of warm and cool tones so you have a lot of those kind of orangey fall colors in the top two rows and then the bottom two rows are a little bit more on the cool side which I think is so cool and I like how they kind of separated the two in the palette as well so I'm gonna go ahead and just swatch this one out first and then we can compare it to the original one because I kind of feel like there are some similar shades between the two so let me just swatch this out first. Okay guys, so here we have a night and day difference from the Too Faced palette. This one swatches so beautifully. The shimmer shades just go on like butter. I'm gonna live swatch a couple for you just so you can see, but they are not chunky. The only one that was, was this gold right here. It had a little bit of like some glitter fallout. The rest of them, were just so smooth and metallic and beautiful. And the matte shades are just like one swipe, so smooth. So just by the swatches alone, this one is definitely the better palette and more worth spending your money on if you're gonna buy a fall palette. Let me just show you quickly what I'm talking about with the shimmers. So I'll just pick up this one. You hardly even have to put your fingers in them. Like you don't have to dig to pick up product. So just look at that. They just glide on like liquid metal. They're so beautiful. Here, let's just do a couple more. I have this orange one and the silver, or it's actually kind of more like a taupey bronze, but they're just gorgeous, so effortless. So I'm really excited to play with this palette. And like I said, I love that it has more cool tones. Let me just show it to you next to the original. So I do kind of see some overlap between them. And I do want to swatch them side by side just so we can see exactly how close they are. Because the original one doesn't have the blues or the turquoise colors, but all the rest kind of looks similar and I don't want you guys to buy the new one if you have the old one already, especially if you don't think you'll really wear the blue shades that much. If you're mostly gonna be dipping into the other shades, I think it just makes sense to keep the original. But let me go ahead and just swatch them quick and we'll see how close they really are. All right, so here we have Maneater After Dark on the top, Maneater Nightfall on the bottom. So these 14 shades are ones that I felt like were just about the same in both palettes. We have a lot of, lot of dupes in this one. For a 24 shade palette, to have 14 shades that are virtually identical, there are only 10 that are a little bit different. So I'm gonna say if you have last year's version, you probably don't need the new one just because you can probably find those blues in other palettes that you have in your collection already. I mean, this is actually pretty shocking how close they are. That being said, if you don't have last year's version and you like cooler tone shadows, then you might prefer this one if you were trying to buy one or the other, but I really don't think you need both. The biggest differences between the two, I would say this one here, you have this bright matte yellow and you also have a pink shimmer, which you don't get in this one. And over here, you have the turquoise shades, you have this silvery shimmer shade, and you have these three blue shades here along with this purple. But other than that, pretty much all the rest of the shades are the same or fairly close. So again, I don't want you guys to waste your money on something that you already have. I do think the formula is amazing in both palettes. I think it's the same. It's very consistent across the board. So I don't think you'll be disappointed with either one of these. I just don't feel like you need them both. Hey guys, I just got this in from Lottie London and it says, Love Sucks the Vampire Diaries. So it looks like a Halloween collection. And inside, we have some really fun products. I took a quick look before I started filming, 
And honestly, I just feel like this is so well done. So often we see these Halloween collections from drugstore brands like Wet n Wild, and they're always so boring to me, but they have some really, really cool products. There's a little palette right here, which will open, I guess, upstairs. But then we also have a color changing lip and cheek stick. We have the Blood Drip Lip Tint, which seems so like kind of gross and cool at the same time. This is an eye gloss. And then they have their press on nails, which look like a beautiful color color and also a blending sponge which isn't too exciting but I just thought this looked so fun it's available at Walmart and they sent this little book here that tells a little bit about the different products so anyway let's go upstairs and open all of this up and we'll do some swatches all right so let's check out this collection a little bit closer so I guess we'll start out with the palette I really want to swatch this and see what the formula is like all right so here we have the outside of the palette it's cardboard packaging here's the back and then inside oh this is cool tone this is really really pretty actually I don't normally like Halloween palettes but I actually like this color story I love this crease color we have this really pretty purple the silver this is really really nice and I think this would look beautiful in the outer corner as well so all right let me go ahead and swatch it and we'll see what it looks like all right, so this actually swatched pretty well, dare I say even better than the Too Faced palette. The shimmer shades were really creamy, they picked up well. Um, I felt like the mattes were maybe a little bit sheer. I had to build up this black one, and even so, it's still not like a jet black, it's more of a softer black. I mean, it's a really pretty palette, and it's only seven bucks. It kind of reminds me of the little Catrice six pan palettes that I like. The formula feels very similar. So anyway, I think this is really cute. All right, so next let's check out the other products in the line. We have the eye gloss. In the booklet, I read that this is actually an eye and face gloss, so you can use it just to kind of give a wet look, and it's supposed to be a silvery shade. Ooh, that is actually way prettier than I was expecting. I thought it was just going to be clear with a little bit of shimmer, but look at that. It's actually nicely pigmented. It does have kind of a glossy feel, so... I don't know if it's going to crease on the eyes or not, but like, how gorgeous is that? Okay, I was definitely not expecting that. Now I feel like I really need to try this out. Um, all right, next we have the PH Color Changing Lip and Cheek Stick. So I don't know if you guys remember, but last year this was part of their Halloween collection, and it's also a pH adjusting black blush and they recently just re-released it as just part of their regular line because pH adjusting stuff is just really popular right now. So um, this is this year's version and I love that you can use it on your lips as well. And kind of similarly, it looks black when you look at it in the stick, but I'm guessing it's just going to change into probably like a berry pink on me, which is what these normally look like. So let's see. Oh wow, actually this one looks a little bit more purple, which I think is beautiful. Maybe the little bit of black tint in here is making it turn like not as hot pink as the pH adjusting stuff usually does on me. I can just quickly show you um, what it looks like next to the blush in case you already have the blush. It could be similar. Let's take a look. So this is the blush. This one goes on black at first, but I feel like the blush is actually not quite as pigmented. It's a little bit lighter. I actually think this color is really, really beautiful. Can't wait to try it on. All right, and then next up we have the Blood Drip Lip Tint. So this one is it's kind of gross in a way. It looks like a tube, like when you get your blood taken. Sorry if any of you guys are squeamish, hopefully not. But it looks like it's kind of a lip oil or a lip gloss type of formula. So let's see. It looks like all the red pigment kind of stays down at the bottom and then the top is clear. It's sort of like a two-phase thing. Um, so I'm just going to put a little here and we'll see what color it changes into. Oh wow, it's kind of a little bit bright. It's a little intense. It smells really good. It has like a berry scent. So I like that. But this is also pH adjusting. So I have a feeling this is going to turn a lot brighter 
than the blush on me. It already looks like pretty bright, but I'm just pleasantly surprised by this collection. I feel like finally a brand did something really cute and really innovative for Halloween. And then the last two products in the collection, here we have the Stay Pressed Press-On Nails. So they have a whole range of press-on nails that look really good. I usually don't wear press-on nails because I wear contacts and I just find that it's so hard to get my contacts in and out if I have long nails. So I always keep my nails really short, but these look beautiful. They're kind of like an ombre effect. They go from black into like an orangey red color. So I think these look beautiful. And then they also have a blending sponge that kind of has the same ombre effect. Let me just open this up. Yeah, so this also it kind of starts out black and it goes down to red, which I think is just so, so pretty. It's unique. It's interesting. So like I said, I love what they did with this collection. I don't normally like Halloween stuff in general. I always feel like it's just something that I wouldn't wear. It's more for like if you're doing your makeup for Halloween, but I feel like these products are something that you can just use for every day. It doesn't have to be for a costume. So I guess that's what I really love about it. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Good morning morning guys just a couple of quick things today first we have this brush holder from BK Beauty they sent this over and it is genius first of all it is a travel brush holder so it zips up at the top you can fit so many brushes in here and then um, when you're not traveling you just open it up and you just push this down and it becomes a stand for your brushes. So it has that flat bottom, you just set it down and you have all of your brushes right here that you can pick from. So I just thought this was so cute. I traveled so much this summer and I wish I had had something like this to keep my brushes in. I usually just throw them into whatever my travel makeup bag is, but I'm definitely gonna keep my BK Beauty brushes just in here from now on and that way I can just see what I have very easily. And if I wanna travel, I just slide this up up, zipper it and I'm good to go so I thought that was just a cute little brush holder if you have any BK Beauty brushes this is just a great little thing to keep them in I also got some skincare from Alpin Beauty so this is a brand that is sold at Sephora they're from Jackson Hole Wyoming and they use a lot of wild growing plants in their products so they sent over their Ghostberry Super Peptide and Ghostberry barrier repair cream which sounds amazing as somebody with dry skin it has snap 8 peptide which is eight different peptides that help to relax expression lines it has a five ceramide complex to bind moisture and strengthen your skin's barrier and it also has the ghostberry and tasmanian pepper to soothe and calm the appearance of redness and irritation so i love the packaging i think it's so beautiful this sounds really amazing they're also 100 percent vegan and cruelty free and they're a national park restoration donor which I think is so cool and under here it just says clinical ingredients on their own are no match for the climate conditions that your skin deals with at high altitude but the combination of wild plants and potent actives is this is the story of Alpin so just a quick little background on the company but let's go ahead and just see what this cream feels like all right so I'm just gonna take this off and I'm just gonna I guess put some on from here so I don't dip my fingers in the jar. All right, so right away, it looks very thick and rich, perfect for dry skin. And I love that it's made for high altitudes as well because sometimes I feel like I live at a high altitude. My skin is so incredibly dry in the winter time. This just feels heavenly. It doesn't have any scent to it, which is awesome. And that little dollop actually is going a very long way. I'm just spreading it all the way up my arm here. But even though it feels so thick and rich, it's also not overly greasy. It just has a really lovely texture so let me just show you I guess the before and after so this is my hand with no moisturizer and this is it with and it even just gave my skin such a beautiful glow it feels so nice so I'm definitely excited to start using this now that it's almost fall and into the winter for sure so I just wanted to share that with you guys as well all right, so let's go ahead and just get into some of the speed reviews. So first up, we have the Dermatology SPF, and I really like this one. I felt like it has a nice light texture. It feels very much like a moisturizer, and it gives my skin a dewy glow that doesn't have like shimmer in it, like the e.l.f. Woe Glow or some of the other glowy sunscreens that are out there right now. It just gives your skin more of like a hydrated glow. 
And even though it says that it's a tinted moisturizer, I honestly didn't feel like it gave me very much coverage, if any at all. So I really wouldn't expect that from it, but it did feel like skincare going on and I felt like my foundations applied really nicely on top of it. I wore it every day this week. So overall, I really do like this product a lot. I kind of wish it was an all mineral sunscreen because those are the ones I tend to go for. And this one is like a blend of chemical and mineral. But so far I haven't had any irritation or any issues with it. So I really think this is a great sunscreen to check out. Next up, I actually did a look the other day with the Lottie London Vampire Collection, and I was really excited for all of those products as you saw when I was unboxing everything. So first up, I did a look with the eyeshadow palette. First, I started out with that lightest matte shade, the one that's kind of like a dusty mauve lavender, and I started just blending that right into my crease with a fluffy brush. And I felt like it showed up really nicely. It blended beautifully on the skin. No issues with this shade whatsoever. It really worked out great. And then next I picked up the black shade, which I normally never do. I rarely wear black eyeshadow, but I just found that this one was like a very soft and sheer black that's not too heavy. When I was swatching it, I just noticed that. So I just focused this one mostly on the outer corner and then I blended it back toward the middle of my lid. It's a really, really blendable shade. And at times it got a little bit patchy. I think dark shades in general just tend to do that. But overall, it worked out really well in the end. So I was pretty happy with it. And then next I picked up the silver shimmer shade and I just patted this all over my lid from the inner corner to meet up with where the black shade ended. And I just applied this with my finger. I did use some of my NYX glitter glue under this, which I do with every shimmer shade. It just helps them to grip and to pop a little bit more. And then next I actually picked up a little bit of that deep blue shimmer shade. And I put this one kind of right where the silver and the black meet to kind of merge them together. It just gave a little tiny pop of blue and I just felt like it helped the two colors to blend a little bit more seamlessly going from light to dark. So I honestly didn't know what to expect from this palette, but I liked the way that the look came out. It really was very easy to use and I thought all of the colors were pretty. So next up for my cheeks, I wanted to try the pH adjusting lip and cheek stick. So I just applied this one right from the tube and blended it out quickly with my fingers. And I tried to go really fast because sometimes products like this that leave a stain behind can just set down really quickly. And I found this to be very easy to blend and easy to work with, which I loved. And I absolutely love this color too. It's not as bright pink as some of the other pH products. And I thought it just gave me a very natural looking result. It has a tiny little bit of a dewy feel that didn't dry down 100%, but it didn't feel sticky either. You guys know I don't like anything sticky on my cheeks. This one was just very slightly dewy, so I didn't mind it that much. And then next I wanted to try that pH adjusting lip gloss that looks like a test tube. And this one has a really nice comfortable feel. It's not sticky at all. It has a very silky and cushiony texture. It's kind of like a lip oil. And I was surprised that it didn't turn bright red on my lips because it did look that way when I swatched it on my arm. I'm not really sure if I got enough of the red pigment on the wand this time. It kind of all settles to the bottom of the tube. So I don't know if that's maybe what happened, but it did seem to give my lips a little bit of like a tingly feeling after a few minutes. And it doesn't say that it's a plumping formula, but I noticed in the ingredient list, it has cinnamon alcohol in it, which comes from cinnamon leaves. So that could be what gave it that little bit of like, it was almost like a spicy feeling and kind of a little bit of heat, but it didn't feel like a burning or anything super uncomfortable. It was just something that I noticed. So I think it's probably that ingredient. And I also tried the eye gloss, which swatched so beautifully on my arm. I could not wait to try this. But when I applied it on top of my eye look, I felt like it kind of made the shadows break up a little bit. And it even kind of removed the shadow underneath on one of my eyes. So I think I probably should have just put this on like a bare eyelid. It just didn't seem to work well with powder shadows and it also kind of felt heavy and sticky like every time I blinked my eyes. So I wasn't really a fan of using it on my eyes, but they did say you can use it all over the face. So it might work as like a really dewy highlighter or something. I guess you could use it in that way. And um, I did want to mention too that this collection is available at Walmart, but I also did see that they have it on the CVS website and 
over there they have even more stuff. They have two different palettes that are larger than this one as well as one additional color of the lip gloss. It's like a purpley black one. I completely forgot that Lottie London is at CVS now. So that's another option if you wanted to check out that collection because I actually don't see it on the Walmart website as of yet. So it's, I think it's supposed to hit sometime this month, but I don't know when. So if you're interested in these products, I would definitely, I guess, check them out at CVS for now because that's where I was able to find them. And then I know we had a lot of palettes this week. We had the Sigma ones, we had the Tarte Maneater, we had the Alter Ego palette and also the Too Faced one. And this was back to school week. It was really crazy. So I didn't have a lot of time to test out the palettes, but I had time to do one palette today and I figured I would do the Too Faced one because I'm already really familiar with Sigma's formula. I'm really familiar with the Tarte formula, which I love. I think it's great as well. Um, the Alter Ego formula is always very consistent and it's always excellent. The one that I wasn't sure about though, that I really wanted to try so that I could give you guys my solid opinion on it is the Too Faced one because Too Faced is just so hit or miss and this didn't swatch the best, but I've kind of heard from other creators that it applies better than it swatches. So um, I did a look with it today and I feel like the look came out really pretty. So I'll quickly show you some footage of how I got this look. So the first color that I picked up is the shade Morning Matcha, which is kind of this yellowy green. It's actually a really beautiful color. I like this a lot. It's a little bit different, a little bit unique. And I just picked this up on my Sigma E24 brush and applied it right to the crease and just kind of blended that back and forth in the windshield wiper motion. And then I took my BK Beauty 201 crease brush and then just blended it out a little bit more just to diffuse the edges. And I felt like this blended better than I was expecting. It does feel a little bit dry and scratchy when you pick it up or when you swatch it, but blending it out with a brush, it seemed to perform okay. I felt like in some spots, it could have been like just slightly patchy and not super smooth, but I didn't feel like it was horrible either. It showed up nicely and it was really pigmented. Next, I picked up the shade Kiss My Griddle, which is a medium brown shade with little gold micro glitters. And this one also, I felt like it applied okay with a brush. It wasn't one of my favorites when I swatched the palette, but I kind of wanted to use this color with the green and I feel like it applied to the eye nicely and this one blended out really smoothly. So I wasn't disappointed with that one either. And then for my eyelid, I picked up the green shade side of fruit and this one applied really nicely on top of my NYX glitter glue. I always put that down first, like I said, just to make shadows pop a little bit more. I think if you want this intensity and you don't have a glitter glue, you should probably wet your brush or a finger first before applying this one just to get this same kind of effect. But if you have a glitter glue or a really sticky primer, it'll do the job as well. And I thought that this one applied really, really beautifully too. So overall, the look came out better than I was expecting. Again, I haven't tried the whole palette. I know there was one of those shades that had hard pan and they just really, were kind of unimpressive for the price. So I think while the color story is beautiful, I think the formula probably needs a little bit of work. It's definitely not what Too Faced used to be. Like I said, I think you could make it work if you really, really enjoy this color story, or maybe you could get it on sale like at the end of the holiday season. I think it would probably be worth it at that point. I also wanted to mention, it's supposed to smell like maple syrup and pancakes, but I hardly smell anything. It is such a faint smell, even if I put my nose right up to it. I can hardly smell it. So that might be a good thing for some of you guys who don't like the scented palettes, but for those of you who wanted to buy this thinking it's gonna smell as strong as their other ones, it definitely doesn't. So I just wanna mention that as well, but I do think that the Tarte palette definitely has a better formula. Also the Alter Ego palette is so beautiful. It has those really soft pinks and greens. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I definitely recommend that one. You saw how beautifully it's swatched against the Natasha Denona. So if you like the colors in that one, I do think it's worth it. The Sigma palettes as well. If you have some of the larger ones, it's probably not worth getting those little minis unless you really like quads. And then it could make sense. Sigma always has sales going on. Plus I have the 10% off coupon code for Sigma. So you could probably get a pretty good deal on those. And then as for the other things that I tried today, I've been using 
using my BK Beauty brush holder every day. This is just sitting on my counter right now and it is so convenient and I just love that if I have to travel, I can just pull this up, zipper it, and I don't have to like transfer brushes to another bag. I just have them all right here. So I love that and also the Dyad perfume. I've been wearing that highs and lows every single day and I just cannot get enough of it. It's the most beautiful scent. So again, they do have little samples on their website if you wanna check those out. They're like two bucks, I think. So anyway, guys, I think that's everything. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. It really helps out my channel. And also be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. If you'd like to see more videos, if you have some extra time this weekend, be sure to go ahead and just click right there. I have a playlist of some of my more recent videos. So thank you guys again so much and I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in my next one. Take care. Bye.